Professor Hosoya, you're a long-standing watcher of Japan's foreign and security policy. There's been a lot of talk recently of the new Abe administration beginning to think very strategically about its priorities in foreign policy. And we've seen the establishment of new institutions such as the National Security Council that seem to reflect that change in approach. What do you think the security priorities are for the Abe administration when it comes to foreign policy? Uh, Japan has been quite notorious for the lack of coordination among agency, different agencies or uh, departments. For the first time in Japanese modern history, Japan now has a clear national security strategy paper so the government can present what Japanese na national strategy is. And there are some strategic priorities. One of the important priority is, of course, to protect Japanese or national interest and sovereignty. So protect national sovereignty and the territory and the interests. These are the first priority, perhaps. So uh, the government really likes to uh, uh, focus on the importance of these issues. For the purpose of protecting national interest of Japan, the government, uh, the first priority for the admi administration is to enhance international cooperation. Where, where does Japan see its national interests most seriously threatened? Of course, East Asia, East China Sea. Uh, repeatedly, uh, the Senkaku Islands has been challenged by uh, a, a Chinese government, the sovereignty over the Senkaku Islands. So uh, East China Sea is the main theater between Japan and China, and also the US-Japan alliance and China. But that's why, uh, well, particularly Chinese government tried to monopolize East China Sea. The United States and Japan, of course, have been allies for many years. And the issue of the disputed sovereignty over the Senkaku Islands, or the Dayutai as the Chinese refer to them, has been, in a sense, a long-standing issue. Why has it become such a lightning rod and a source of regional tension now? Recently, particularly after 2008, Chinese government began to think that Japan is a declining country, and the United States as well is a declining country. And, of course, China is a country in rise. So that's why I think that Chinese leaders now think that the balance of power are changing. And also, uh, well, China can be much more assertive to uh, claim uh, further interests and further rights. So I think that the important thing is that both Japan and the United States are still very strong country to protect their own rights and interests. And we have to change the Chinese perception that Japan and the US are declining countries. Do you see any connection between that strategy of the Chinese to try and challenge Japanese administrative control over the islands at sea? Do you see any connection between that and the extension of the announcement of China's ADIZ? Yeah, definitely. But uh, the other problem is that China also has clear uh, de interdepartmental problems. So uh, J Chinese PLA Navy and Chinese PLA Air Force have uh, different dreams and aims. So they're competing. So I think that the both agencies are doing at the same time, but with a coordination. So, uh, so from a different quarter, they are, are putting a stronger pressure upon Japan. As you've um, eloquently explained, China represents a security challenge to Japan on the issue of the Senkakus. But in another context, another issue which has been at the forefront of Japanese debates about national security, North Korea, China potentially acts as a potential solution to the problem of an increasingly nuclearized North Korea. What's the mood in Japan at the moment when it comes to dealing with the DPRK? The Korean government tried to alienate Japan from that tri triangle cooperation. Uh, by alienating Japan, now the uh, Korean government trying to have a stronger cooperation from China. That's why the uh, well, Korean government is more and more relying upon the help coming from China. So undoubtedly, Chinese influence over North Korea is increasing. And it means that uh, ROK government is more and more strongly relying upon uh, the will of China. So uh, I think that both Japan and the United States should coordinate their strategies towards North Korea. 
and try to uh, include our government and enhance trilateral cooperation to solve North Korean problems. Professor Osoya, thank you very much. Thank you very much.